This video will discuss what happens in a star that uh, has a mass a little bit more massive than the Sun, um, down to the very small mass stars. So after the red giant stage, after the star is uh, swollen up and uh, become very large, we've talked a little bit about what happens when the helium flash occurs and we get the uh, helium main sequence for 100 million years or so. Uh, but we have some other questions. There's more to the life of the star. It doesn't stop at the helium main sequence. So what, what's uh, going to happen here? What's the final end of the star's life? And then some comments on why the final stage of a star's life is different uh, depending on whether it's a very massive star, probably eight solar masses or larger, uh, versus uh, a few solar masses and smaller there's a difference in the way the uh, stars die. So we're going through this basic scheme. We have this giant molecular cloud that's cold. Gravity causes uh, the knots of gas to condense, collapse. And as that happens, they, uh, they heat up. We get protostars visible in the infrared. And then finally that core temperature reaches the place where hydrogen fuses to form helium and the star is on the zero age main sequence. Uh, the hydrogen fuel is depleted in the core. Uh, the helium does not uh, is not in a place where the temperature is high enough to allow fusion of helium to occur. So the star's uh, core uh, shrinks. That pulls fresh hydrogen from the uh, layers around the uh, previous core down into a region where the temperature is high enough for hydrogen fusion to go again. And uh, we get actually more energy produced. We get the red giant phase. Now we're going to talk about the planetary nebula phase in this video. A separate video will discuss the supernovas. And then we still have to do the star's remnants, the very final uh, uh, stage of the star. So we've talked about this helium flash. Um, when this happens, now the, the core again has an energy source. It's away from this degenerate state of matter. The core expands as the temperature goes up increases its pressure. That pushes hydrogen back out into the cooler part of the star. It's not cold, but the cooler part of the star. And the uh, rate of hydrogen fusion goes way down. So the uh, star is not producing as much energy on the interior. That causes a decrease in the pressure in the interior. Gravity wins again for a while. And the star's radius decreases because there's less total energy being produced in the interior of the, of the star. Uh, we now have uh, uh, less outward directed pressure than we have inward directed pressure from the weight of the, the material on the outside of the star. Uh, we get some helium fusion for 100 million years or so, creating carbon. Um, eventually that helium is used up and the temperature for a star, the mass of the sun, uh, does not become high enough that carbon can fuse. Uh, carbon has six protons six protons and six protons trying to get together uh, requires a very high speed requires a very high temperature and that does not occur for a star of the mass of the sun so i'm just kind of giving you the explanation maybe you don't have a neighbor handy right now anyway so i'm going to pause for just a little second while you think about that <coughs> the carbon does not fuse and a star as massive as the sun or smaller mass and a little bit bigger than the sun carbon does not fuse um, so we lose that energy source and just for for clear cutness let's uh, let's call the division between low and high mass stars eight mass times the sun um, eight solar masses so we're going to talk about in this video what happens to the life of the star for the uh, case when it's less than eight solar masses so this star does not uh, fuse uh, carbon all the way up to iron producing the uh, elements in the periodic table. Um, as we get towards eight solar masses, it might be able to fuse carbon a little bit, and I don't remember, but uh, it's not going to go through the full process of uh, bringing us up to an iron core. So let's just say there's carbon there. And again, this is a situation that's going to take a long time for the low mass stars. The low mass stars have uh, less fuel than the high mass stars, but the low mass stars don't burn that fuel very fast their luminosity dependent on mass to the 3.5 power so when the mass is small, the luminosity is small they have uh, a small amount of fuel but they uh, 
don't use it very rapidly at all. So they have very extremely long lifetimes for the low mass stars. So we're in this giant phase for the star, and in this giant phase, um, we have the core again. The helium is uh, you know, being depleted a little bit in the core when it leaves the helium main sequence. And again, we can have shells of fusion around the core, a helium fusion shell and a hydrogen fusion shell. And again, with the compression of the material at the core, the temperature is higher. So these fusions uh, burn at a faster rate, you know, burning equals fusion, uh, that the fusion process proceeds at a faster rate, creating again more internal pressure in the star and now we can uh, push the star layers out to the supergiant uh, phase, or very big red giant phase, uh, similar to what happened when the stars left the main sequence and we got the red giant. Now we're leaving the helium main sequence and we're going up into the supergiant uh, category. In these very large stars, the outer layers of the stars are very far from the center of the star, and gravity depends on distance. So atoms out in this uh, extreme edge of the uh, star's atmosphere uh, are not pulled back very strongly. And the light from the star, and if the star is pulsating a little bit, that can push the gas away from the star. And it turns out these stars can lose significant amount of mass. And one solar mass, that's a significant amount of mass. And 10,000 years, this gas just drifts away from the central star. It has escape velocity. It's moving away from the central star. What this does, it moves the outer layers of the star away, and we can now more see the hot core. The hot core. So, how do you think this star would be located on the HR diagram? Temperature goes to the left, increases to the left. This star is going to uh, gradually be plotted more and more to the left on the HR diagram as the uh, hot core is more and more revealed. And the ultraviolet light coming from this very hot core is able to ionize the gas in the, uh, that was pushed out away from the atmosphere of the star. So this ionized gas, the electrons are recombining and uh, different emission lines are being uh, uh, emitted by the atoms as the electrons recombine with the nucleus of the atom. And we do see colors when we look at these objects in a telescope. And they look a uh, significant size, as big as a planet in the telescope. Are they the size of planets? No, they're much, much bigger. The planets are close to us. Here we see something that is apparently the size of a planet in the telescope. But it's much further away. And consequently, it's a much larger object. So here's a photograph of a, a young planetary nebula. You can... Uh, see the material that's uh, coming away from the core. You can see these kind of waves of atmosphere that are moving out away from the star. Another planetary nebula, the Helix Nebula. And you can see just a dim uh, point of light in the center there. And that's the uh, uh, remnant core of the uh, uh, supergiant. So we have this hot core being revealed. And again, colors coming off, emission lines from uh, atoms as the electrons recombine with their, with their nucleus. So our sun is going to grow in size and eventually uh, become a planetary nebula as well, with its atmosphere being pushed away from the central core. Here's uh, on the HR diagram what's happening here. So we've had the uh, uh, star leaving the main sequence go up to the red giant phase, helium flash occurs, we get the helium main sequence, and then the star grows in size again. Um, we get on to the larger than the giant stage. Um, this one doesn't go extremely large, but uh, larger than the giant stage. And after that, we're pushing away the atmosphere of the star and the more revealing the hot core of the, uh, of the star system. We have this planetary nebula, the very hot core, and gradually, since there's no fusion going on, gradually that core cools off and we move into the white dwarf stage of that uh, carbon core. Uh, so we come down to the main sequence, gravity winning here. We get uh, extra pressure in the uh, interior as the hydrogen fusion shell takes place, pushes it up to the helium, to the red giant, helium flash occurs. 
internal pressure drops back down as the shells of helium and hydrogen don't uh, produce as much energy. Then we go up uh, larger again as the uh, process runs out of helium in the core and we get the higher temperature in the core. We get shells of helium and hydrogen fusion giving off more energy. And then the uh, atmosphere of the star is ejected, pushed away, and we reveal the hot core. So we go left on the HR diagram for the uh, uh, surface temperature properties and finally cool down to the white dwarf. We'll talk about in a different video. Here again on the HR diagram with some of the uh, uh, times, you might notice a trend here. The processes happen more rapidly as we get towards the end of the life of the star up to this point. And then uh, they're not showing the white dwarfs on this diagram, but they're, those are very long, uh, long times down there as well. Uh, so some photographs of uh, planetary nebula, one called the Ring Nebula, very famous and very lovely uh, view in a telescope. And this, it's not spherical exactly. It depends on the shape that you see in the telescope. It's a little bit on how the uh, pole and the equator of the star are arranged in comparison to the Earth on how this material gets pushed away. Um, but again, the central star here that's very hot and ionizing gas inside here, this hot star giving off ultraviolet light. Um, but where we do have more gas, we, we see more light coming. So it, it's a little bit like a soap bubble, but I don't want you to leave you with the impression that the planetary nebula are spheres. Uh, they're not just spheres. It's more complicated outflow of gas from the star than just a spherical shape. Uh, but where we do have more gas, we get more light. So the, the atmosphere that's been pushed away is a little denser where you see the more light. Here's some other photographs of planetary nebula that definitely should convince you. Planetary nebula are not just spheres, but can be very complicated. And we can have periods of higher outburst of or pushing away of the uh, atmosphere of the star and get some rings see more complicated ring structure in here uh, some lobes of uh, atmosphere that then pushed away but a lot nice uh, arrangement of different kinds of uh, shapes from these uh, planetary nebula and again this is towards the end of the life of the star uh, when it's not too long it's going to be not visible to us uh, but in this uh, stage, this atmosphere is being energized by the central star and uh, shines brightly and uh, gives us these uh, almost they look like planets. When they were first seen, they were thought to be planets, but then they realized, the astronomers realized they were not moving through the star field, so like planets do as they orbit the sun, they're very, very, very far away. They're like star distance away and consequently don't move through the constellations. Um, but the planetary nebula, gas that's expanded, that used to be in the atmosphere of the star, and uh, it's been, been pushed in away. So I just ask you to jot down some questions and ask your instructor. That's where this video is going to stop. We have these star masses of less than eight solar masses. Uh, the star runs out of energy in the interior. It uh, swells up, and the atmosphere uh, drifts away from the star, leaving a very hot core for a time. We'll talk what happens to that core in another video. So keep reading.